OK, uh, good evening. This is week three Tuesday. Today is the last week that we are going to or the last lecture we're going to do bending. Okay. So I hope to finish bending today. And we are going to look into shearing stress. OK, so to, today's topic on bending is classified as eccentric unsymmetrical loading. So as you can see in this figure, which you can download on uh, Avenue to learn, they have downloaded the image. Is I want you all to focus on this Excel load P. OK, so I want you all to take note that PX. OK, that P. is not uh, in line uh, with the x-axis. Okay. And if you were to observe, why, what do I mean that it's not in line? Okay, so there is an offset distance along the uh, y-axis and this distance along the y-axis the offset is b and an offset distance along the z axis and along z axis the 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 offset is a okay so so there so i just highlight this offset distance okay so this is in in uh z this is in y okay so this is your distance b your distance a so when this is a case you realize that moment about y okay so moment about y axis is p multiplied by a okay and then uh moment about z axis which is force times by perpendicular distance is P multiplied by B, right? So the, 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 the formula for eccentric loading is the normal stress in the X direction is equal to uh, P divided by A. A, A over here defines our cross sectional area All right and plus by my over iyy multiplied by z minus by mz over izz multiplied by y okay so the only add in over here between centric and eccentric is the axle load, as you all know already. So this is due to the axle loading. And this uh, due to bending moment. Now, the cons the the what here or, or, or the analysis is still the same like what I taught you all on 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 week one. The head of the bending moment vector is still compression. The tail end is still tensor. Everything's still the same. OK, so let's look at an example. OK, let's look at example number one. And this example again, I posted all these images on Avenue to Learn. You can get them on Avenue to Learn, okay? 
Okay, let's look at an example. So for this question, right, they want us to determine the stresses at point A and B, and we also were asked to indicate the location of the neutral axis intersecting AB and BD. Okay, so this is the problem that has uh, given to us, and we know that this is classified as uh, eccentric. Uh, unsymmetrical. Loading. And why it's classified as eccentric is because we know that there is an axial load. And unsymmetrical is because we realize that there's a moment, moment acting about the y-axis and moment acting about the z-axis. Okay, so uh, I'm going to draw the transformation where we classify as moment about y and moment about z. Okay, or where's our y-axis? So this axis I've drawn now. This is our y. And then the axis that I'm going to construct next. This is our X. And then the final direction. This is our Z. Okay. So now the formula that we have to apply is stress X is equal to P over A uh, plus by MY over IYY multiplied by Z minus by MZ over IZZ multiplied by Y. Now, the technique that I taught you is I don't want you all to worry about the positive and the negative down there. Okay. The method that I teach you is uh, is to is uh, you can use the moment vector to identify whether is it positive or negative. Okay, so let's look at P. Okay, let's look at axial load. Okay, so let's look at P. So we know the axial load in the x direction is all in tensile. You can see all these are pulling out. They are all in tensile. So it's going to be 150 plus by 500 plus by 250. So this will be equal to uh, 150, 500 plus by 250. So all together is 900 pounds, straightforward. Okay, and we know that it's going to generate tensile. Okay, because it's pulling away uh from the structure okay and then the next thing we're going to do now okay so we know what is our p right the next thing we are going to do is find our moment in the y direction and moment in the z so we're going to find moment y and the moment in z okay so we are going to i'm going to draw this in 2d now So I'm going to draw it viewing that this is our Y, this is our Z, and over here, this is rotation in our X. And then I'm going to draw the cross section. Okay, so this is our cross section. And then we are going to draw, so from here, we can draw our centroids through observation, right? So you don't need to find the, the, the centroid through calculation. You know that this is the centroid along the z-axis. And then this is a centroid 
along the y-axis. Okay. So next we are going to uh, draw our forces. Okay. So we have one force coming down. Oh, sorry. Pointing towards us. Okay. So this is 150. And then another one pointing towards us at 500. And then there's another one pointing towards us. And that is 250. Okay. So I'm going to copy and paste this because I need this diagram later on. Um, my mouse is not behaving now, or is the system crashed? No, the system is not crashed, but my, my mouse is just not, oh, it's working now. Yeah, and I need it later on. Same diagram. So the first thing we will do is we are going to find moment. Okay, we're going to find moment. About. The. Y axis. Okay. So the Y axis, so this is our Y axis. And I'm going to assume that positive is going in a uh, anti-clockwise direction. Okay, I'm going to assume that positive is going to anti-clockwise direction. So moment about Y will be equal to, so if we look at the respective distances, okay, so I better put in my distance so that you all will know why we why we take that amount so we are aware that the distance from here to here this is equal to four inches in total and on the vertical this is equal to two inches okay so we're going to take moment along the y-axis okay or we're gonna find a moment about the y axis. So the one I highlight, that is the moment along the axis that we can find. And I specify that going anti-clockwise will be positive. So the 150 and 500 are in the same direction. So you can have 150 plus by the 500 is going to generate an anti-clockwise. So the perpendicular distance is two inch. And then the 250 is going to generate uh, clockwise. Okay, so minus uh, 250 multiplied by 2. So what we have over here, 150 plus by 500 multiplied by 2 minus by 500 is equal to uh, 250. Wait, 150 plus by 500 multiplied by 2 minus by 250 times 2. I have 800 pound inch. Sorry, the 800 pound inch is going to be positive. So the assumed direction that positive is going in a counterclockwise is correct. So now you immediately sketch this out. Okay, so immediately you go into your analysis aspect. So you know that this direction over here. This is your moment about Y. And over here, the head of the arrow is going to generate compression. The tail end is going to give you tensile. Okay. So that is done already. Then the next one we're going to do is going to find moment about z axis so the focus the moment that we're going to find about z axis so this is our z axis we're going to find moment in oops sorry along this axis or acting about this axis that's our z okay so um, we are going to assume that 
positive is going in a 